Hey guys, so how I ended up outside in the woods, kind of woods, I have no idea to do a video on um, female dress in the funeral business, but I thought about doing like a whole bunch of clothing behind me up against a wall and stuff. I thought that was just a little too kitschy for me. Just, I, I can't do that. Um, so came outside. I like natural light as often as I can and got a little breezy, but we're going to roll with it. So the first thing when talking about uh, dress code and kind of what you should wear and what works best, not that I am a professional at this by any means, but definitely 15 years in the business gives me opinion. So your employer is definitely going to dictate first and foremost on what you can wear and what's appropriate. Your employer may have a dress code for what you need to wear every day. I've known funeral homes that buy you a specific suit and that is your suit to wear every day that you work there and you wear a white shirt and then the men wear a all matching tie or maybe the ladies have a scarf or something that matches the men's ties um, I know one they all wear bow ties that all match so it just depends on the funeral homes overall kind of policy as to what you really can wear I know some that don't allow colored shirts. You wear white no matter what. I'm a colored person. Um, I'm in love right now with the yellow. Um, that's kind of my, my thing right now. Uh, so it all depends on the employer. Some of them may give you an allowance for clothing. So ask. Always ask. You know, maybe something that the employer has never had somebody ask them about before, but say, hey, well, do you offer a clothing allowance? so I can buy clothes specifically for here or would you buy me one new suit upon my you know coming to work for you or once a year will you buy me a new suit will you launder my clothes will you pay for my dry cleaning uh, you know funeral homes may offer these to you but you don't know if you don't ask possibly so ask about those things so the number one thing about buying clothes is be practical it's not a fashion show at work. I used to train um, the high school girls that would work in the evenings at visitations, and that was my number one thing I told them. This is not a fashion show. And it's hard for, I think, women to go from that mindset where you are buying clothes to look your best and, and, and maybe impress other people and, and try and keep up with the Joneses, but it's not always practical in the funeral business. You know? Um, you need to have shoes that are practical. Um, I've seen women in the funeral business wearing three inch heels. Not practical. You cannot go a 10 hour day on your feet in three inch heels. You cannot do a room. I'm not going to say you can't, but you shouldn't. It's not good for you in the long run to do that. You're doing more damage to your body trying to wear those three inch heels or two inch heels even. Um, for a 10-hour day, running a service, setting up chapel, doing all those things. Um, you can't wear two, three-inch heels on a removal and not be a liability. Carrying a 200-pound person on a cot backwards down a set of stairs at an apartment building, you are only a liability uh, to the funeral home and to the family you're serving because you're not stable enough to do that that action not good so buy some comfortable shoes buy some nice flats buy some you know I had a foot problem for a while and I had to wear those black tennis shoe orthotic things comfy as all get out I never had a single person even blink an eye that I was wearing these black orthotic tennis shoes running funerals like that didn't my shoe choice wasn't really even a question on that day it wasn't about me or my shoes um, another thing was, so when I was pregnant, um, I found this the most, I bought one pair of black, um, dress pants for my first pregnancy. I was like, I'm going to get by with buying the least amount of stuff, you know? And I wore the same pair of pants every day I worked. So four days a week and then every other weekend and I'd wash them every night as need be. And they made it through that pregnancy and part of my second pregnancy. I did invest in a couple pair of my second pregnancy, but I bought one jacket and one pair of pants, and it wasn't even a maternity jacket. I just bought a larger sized jacket, and I didn't butt in it. And then that also, when I was just post-pregnancy, could wear that jacket as I was still a little heavier. 
So, you know, investing in a good suit that you wear on funeral day only and, you know, kind of reserving different clothes for different things is, is key. That you need to invest in some key items and then go in and hit your sales, hit your, um, you know, your quantity and, and maybe like the shirts you wear underneath and change your shell or um, change your long sleeve shirts, get some cardigans to wear over um, your your shell shirts. It's, it's totally doable and that way you can change up your whole look but just leave your bottom black base or gray base or um, some people like navy blue. I don't because then I have to have another pair of shoes and I don't like navy blue shoes for some reason. It just is weird to me. But um, So I stick in the black and gray tweed stripes any zone in that black and gray zone and then I know all my shoes match all my shirts will match it just all goes together um, also you know even check in with your employer because they may want to do some like embroidered type shirt like a dress shirt that has their name embroidered on it and that's kind of what you wear when you're meeting with families or on a day that there's no visitations or services or on um, removals things like that um, sweaters that maybe have like a v-neck sweater that had a name embroidered on it something along that lines um, I know several funeral homes that have adopted this with their removal staff and with um, their office staff um, I first thought when I was at a hospital that all the hospital staff was wearing collared button-ups with a name embroidered on them and they all looked so nice and uniform and professional and I really liked that there was no question over what somebody was going to be wearing and if it was going to be inappropriate because everybody knew what they were supposed to wear on those days. So sometimes that takes the question out of it by having this blanket, this is what you're wearing if it's not a funeral day type thing. Um, I am one that on arrangements, I like to be a little less cat or a little, yeah, a little less formal. So I always wear a suit jacket um, on funeral days and when I've got a memorial service or anything and I'll have a jacket and uh, stuff on for visitations as well unless I'm wearing like a suit dress then sometimes you don't wear jackets with those depending on the dress um, but for arrangements I often like to step down just a little and wear the cardigan um, wear something a little less formal just because it's a more formal situation you want to be professional but also be relatable to people and I think sometimes when you're in your suit and you're doing this business discussion that you're not as approachable often especially to somebody who's you know coming in with in their grub clothes from working in a field or you know working at a shop or something and and you're sitting across from them in your three-piece suit it's it's maybe you can't relate as well so I like to hit that middle ground often because I feel that I'm I'm more approachable and I, I can connect more with families with that aspect um, and the last bit of advice I'm gonna say or well, two more pieces um, keep extra clothes at work so have a set of scrubs there have an extra pair of pants or have extra nylons if you're wearing nylons have extra clothes if you got to do cleaning you never know when you're cleaning the bathroom or when you're gonna have to prep a body or when you're gonna have to go re-aspirate and it's easy to just say oh I'm gonna just leave my clothes and I'll be fine and then the aspirator backs up or you get a splash of bleach on your clothes or something like that and then you've ruined your clothing and if you have money to replace your clothes on a whim, that's great. But everybody doesn't. And so keeping extra clothes to change into, take those five minutes. It saves you a lot of money in the long run um, from replacing clothes. Because I see so many people that have bleach splashes on the bottom of their pants from washing the floor and it splashes up. Or you've got stains down your shirt or, you know, who has not dropped their coffee down their shirt on their drive into work before. So it's always good just to keep an extra set of clothes with you because you never know what the day may bring, especially at a funeral home. Um, and then the last thing is tr when you're trying on clothes at the store, um, put them through a series of tests. Squat in them, bend over in them, you know, move around and, and kind of kick around in them because you're going to be bending over to show families paperwork or to offer a Kleenex or to talk to a widow or widower at the front of church. Can you see down your shirt? Are you showing too much cleavage? 
not a place for cleavage. We're not trying to, you know, get any numbers when we're working at the funeral home. Maybe you are, but that's not your, supposed to be your intent. Um, squat down. You're going to be moving flowers all over the place. You're going to be dressing bodies. You're going to be, you know, moving your body in different ways than just standing and um, looking nice at a funeral. So make sure you're testing out the clothing, checking it from different angles, doing the bends check. I think that one's especially important. Um, so that way you can function and move without worry over the course of the day. Um, I know that years ago I went on a removal and the gentleman was in a small little bedroom and the bed literally was wall to wall, took up the whole room. And I happened to be wearing a skirt suit that day. And so in order to do the removal, I had to walk across the bed and I had to, you know, step over this gentleman to be able to try and move him to the door so we could bring him up to the cot. From that day forward, I didn't, I, I really don't wear skirts hardly ever because of that situation because you just don't know what you're getting into. And so these little pencil skirts that make you look fantastic are not as practical in the funeral home. So, you know, think about all the situations you're going to be working in and um, look your best for those situations rather than just for looking your best. So hopefully this gives you one little tidbit or tip to carry on as you are shopping for your clothes and I will talk to you guys soon.